All right, welcome everyone. It's the Pub Crawlers again, and we are finishing up the IRS charity workshop. So this is section nine. Can I deduct my charitable contributions? And I'm Bash. Joining me again is Kiss. Hello, Kiss. Howdy, howdy. All right, so we're gonna get to play on this bad boy. Oh, I gotta go. Deduct my charitable time. contributions. No, you're this cool. program is brought to you by the IRS exempt organizations. Mm, that's a little loud. Today, Coach. The knowledgeable, straight-talking IRS revenue agent from the stayexempt.org website will answer some basic questions about what types of contributions you can deduct, how much you can deduct, what records to keep, and how to report your charitable contributions. Also here to ask questions are Vernon, a retired volunteer, and Vernon. Emma, who handles fundraising and responds to public inquiries for a charitable organization. Okay, Coach, why don't you start us off with a basic definition of <laughs> a charitable like contribution. sounds like Vernon. Yeah. Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you today. No, no I hope our session will answer questions you may have about the donations you make to charitable organizations. This guy sounds excited to so, be here. I was going to say, what he is... What is a charitable contribution? No. A charitable contribution <laughs> no. is a donation or gift to or for the use He's of like, a qualified I'm organization. An voice actor. It is voluntary. And it's made without getting or expecting to get substantial benefits in return. Okay, donation or a gift is... Well, I guess now is yeah. as good as time as any to start the question. We actually covered all this. What do you mean by qualified? That's a good question. Ooh. Not every nonprofit tax-exempt organization is qualified to receive tax-deductible contributions. Qualified organizations include nonprofit groups whose purpose is religious, charitable, educational, scientific, literary, or preventing cruelty to children or animals. Coach, I make donations to my local food bank, but I don't know if it's a qualified organization. I think it's a nonprofit, and it seems like the work it does is charitable. How can I find out if it is qualified? Excellent question, Vernon. Did they just change who Vernon you can is? Ask the organization whether <laughs> I it's swear a they just switched the names of the, the voices. They should of... be able to tell you. I think they did. Or you can check IRS Publication 78. It lists most qualified organizations. An organization is listed in Publication 78 because it applied for and was granted federal tax exemption. But keep in mind, churches, religious organizations, so this is and like a general overview. Do not have to apply for tax exemption. Why is this so at the very end? So you might not like... find them in Publication 78. Even so, contribution to them would be deductible. Where can I find this publication 78? The easiest way is wow. to go to the charities and nonprofits <laughs> page on the IRS website and click on search for charities. That's an old or browser. You can check your local library's oh, reference yeah. section. You can also call IRS Customer Account Services at 1 877 829 5500 or 1 800 829-4059 for TTY TDD help to find out if an organization is qualified. That's awesome that they have a Coach, phone number. Let's talk about what types of contributions are deductible. Money. Generally, property. You can deduct pocket, contributions expenses, of money or property that you donate to a qualified organization. Uh, directly connected to you can also services, deduct certain out of pocket expenses personal, you incur when you provide services expenses, to a qualified organization. The expenses must Result from services you provided. Be directly connected with the services. Not be personal, living, or family expenses. And be unreimbursed. I volunteer 10 to 15 hours a week at a qualified charitable organization. Can I deduct the cost of my time? No, Vernon. You cannot deduct the value of your time or services. However, as I mentioned earlier, you can deduct your out-of-pocket expenses, such as the cost of gas directly related to getting to and from the place where you volunteer. If you don't want to figure your actual costs, you can use a standard mileage rate for charitable contributions. Coach, why don't you talk a little bit about the types of contributions yeah, that are just not just a general deductible. overview. Well, well okay. you can't deduct we'll money it. or property you give to an organization that is not qualified to receive tax-deductible contributions, such as a Civic League, Social or Sports Club, Labor Union, Chamber of Commerce, Political Group, or Candidate for Public Office. You also can't deduct the cost of raffle, bingo, or lottery tickets, even if you don't win. 
And as I just explained to Vernon, you can't deduct the value of your time or services. Coach, my daughter attends a parochial school, and a friend told me that I can deduct What's the tuition I pay. parochial school? Is that right? I don't know. No, you cannot deduct the cost of your daughter's tuition. Remember the definition of a charitable contribution. Tuition does not meet that definition. Uh, it's not voluntary, to a and you are page. getting something in return that is of equal value to the money you gave up. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. That would have been a big mistake. I won't be taking my friend's tax advice anymore. We've talked about the types of charitable contributions you can deduct, but can you always deduct the full amount? This is interesting. This Generally, is like a personal you tax. you can deduct the full amount of any money you thing. contribute to a qualified organization, unless you receive a benefit as a result of making a contribution. In that case, you can only deduct the amount of your contribution that is more than the value of the benefit you receive, provided that you intended to make a charitable contribution of the excess. For example, if you pay $65 for a ticket to a dinner dance at a church and the event has a fair market value of $25, the amount you can deduct as a charitable contribution is $40. The cost of the ticket, $65, less the value of the dinner dance, $25. Cool. Coach, the charity I work for has a fundraising auction every year. Last year I had the winning bid of $600 for a week's stay at a beach house. Can I deduct the full amount? No. The amount you can deduct will depend on the fair rental value of the beach house. If it would cost $1,000 to rent the house for that week, you would not have a deductible charitable contribution because the amount you paid was less than the fair rental value. If the fair rental value is $500, you would have a deductible charitable contribution of $100, provided you intended to make a charitable contribution of the excess. How would I know the fair market value of any goods or services I receive nice. in return for my contribution? The organization has an obligation to tell you. If you make a payment of $75 or more that is partly a contribution and partly for goods and services, most organizations must provide you with a written disclosure statement. The statement must state that your deductible contribution is limited to the excess money or the fair market value of property you contributed over the value of the goods or services provided by the organization. It must also provide a good faith estimate of the fair market value of the goods or services. An organization must furnish the disclosure statement either when it solicits the contribution or when it receives the contribution. Thanks, Coach. What about property you donate, like used clothing or household goods? Can you deduct the amount you paid for it? The general rule is you can deduct the fair market value of the property at the time of the contribution. However, there are special rules for different types of donated property. Because our time is limited, I'll just touch on the rules for the two most common what? types of property donations, clothing or household items and vehicles. If you contribute clothing or household <laughs> items to a qualified looking. organization, <laughs> the amount you can deduct is generally the fair market value of the property at the time of the contribution. In addition, you cannot take a deduction for clothing or household items you donate unless the items are in good used condition or better. Household items include furniture, furnishings, electronics, appliances, linens, and other similar items. Household items do not include food, paintings, antiques and other art objects, jewelry and gems, and collections. Special rules apply to these items, and we don't have time to cover all of them today. For information on determining the value of items such as antiques or jewelry, see Publication 561, <laughs> Determining the Value of Donated Property. There's a spelling error right Coach, there. earlier this year, I cleaned out my closet and donated a lot of clothing. I also bought new living room furniture and donated my old furniture to a qualified charitable organization. How do I determine the fair market value of my used clothing and old furniture? Take a guess. The fair market value of used clothing and household <laughs> items, such as furniture, is usually much lower than what you paid for the item. There are no fixed formulas or methods for finding the value of clothing you items. Know, a good method for determining though, the value of used clothing is to see are. what buyers actually pay in used clothing stores, such as consignment or thrift shops. Furniture value is also difficult to determine. An item may have little or no market value because it is in a worn condition out of style or no longer useful. Therefore, formulas 
such as using a percentage of the cost to buy a new replacement item, are not acceptable in determining value. You should have support for your valuation, such as photographs, canceled checks, receipts from your purchases of the items, or other evidence. Yeah, yeah, for easy. more details on how to determine the fair market value, check out publication 561. Ooh, right. Okay, Coach, let's move on to vehicle donations. How are they different from other property donations? Can't I just claim the fair market oh, value geez. of my car? Not always. The rules for vehicle donations, which includes cars, boats, and airplanes, are different. In order to calculate the amount you can deduct when you donate a vehicle, you'll need to know what the organization intends to do with the vehicle. Oh, shit. How much you can deduct will depend on whether the organization intends to you sell can take the vehicle, airplanes? use the vehicle in a charitable <laughs> work, make a major improvement Fair to the right. vehicle, or give the vehicle away or sell it for well below the fair market value to a needy individual. That's that's what we should do. We Charitable should organizations typically sell the vehicles that are to donated like to them. Island if your contribution is worth more than $500 need, like, island hoppers, and your organization sells the vehicle, <laughs> generally like your deduction is like limited to the smaller of the gross shit. proceeds from the sale of the vehicle. Ooh. Or destination or tourism the things fair market for value like on small, the date of the contribution. small uh, you should areas. Consult Publication 561 and 4303 locations. for more information yeah, on determining the fair market value. <laughs> Generally, you can deduct the vehicle's fair market value if the organization intends to make a significant intervening use of or material improvements to the vehicles before transferring it. You can also deduct the fair market value if the organization gives the vehicle to or sells it for a price well below fair market value to a needy individual to further the organization's charitable purpose. Mm. The way he said purpose, oh God. Wow, coach, that sounds confusing. Purpose. I've been thinking of donating my wife's car. Now that I'm retired, that's the same dude. We don't need that's cars. the same dude trying to make How a voice. How in the world will I know what the organization ends up doing with her car? Lucky for you, Vernon, the IRS requires that, that the, the organization dude. provide you with a written acknowledgement for a vehicle contribution deduction of more than $500. What that acknowledgement must contain will depend on what the organization did with the vehicle. Why does he keep For doing example, that with the sentences? If the organization <laughs> sold the vehicle, the statement like must he's like certify getting that up. it was sold in an arm's length yeah. transaction between unrelated That's parties. It. That's perfect. it must also include the date the vehicle was sold, the gross proceeds received from the sale, and a statement that your deduction may not exceed the gross proceeds from the sale. If the organization intends to use or materially improve the vehicle, the acknowledgement must certify that it intends to make I mean, a significant intervening use of the vehicle or a material <laughs> improvement to the vehicle, include True. a detailed description of the intended use or material improvement, the duration of that use, and a certification that the vehicle will not be sold before completion of the use or improvement. If the organization intends to give or sell the vehicle to a needy individual at a price significantly below fair market value, and a gift or sale directly furthers the organization's charitable purpose of relieving the poor in distress or the underprivileged who are in need of a means of transportation, then the acknowledgement must certify these facts. The organization hmm. must provide you with Form 1098C, Contributions of Motor Vehicles, Boats, and Airplanes, or other statements containing the same information as Form 1098C. Oh, so that's what that collection was. You must was. attach a copy of Form 1098C or other statements to your tax return. Okay. If you're contemplating right. donating Jeez. a vehicle to a charitable <laughs> organization, He's not happy to be I there. highly recommend that you first review publication 4303, A Donor's Guide to Vehicle Donations. Coach, can you give us a brief description of what types of records a donor should keep to verify charitable contributions? The kinds of records a donor must keep will depend on the amount of contribution and whether it's a cash contribution, non-cash contribution, or an out-of-pocket expense for donated services. To deduct a cash contribution, regardless of the amount, you must have a bank record, such as a canceled check, or a written communication from the organization, such as a receipt Definitely or a letter, a communication from the showing the name of the organization, the date of the contribution, and the amount of the contribution. Cash contributions include those paid by cash, check, electronic funds transfer, credit card, or payroll deduction. Coach, I make contributions by payroll deduction. What type of records do I need to keep? For payroll deductions, you'll need a pay stub, Form W-2 or other employer-furnished 
documents that show the amount documents. withheld and paid to the charitable organization, <laughs> Sorry. along with a pledge card prepared by or at the direction of the charitable organization. Coach, the organization I work for gives donors a written acknowledgement if they make a large contribution even when they pay with a check or credit card. Isn't that unnecessary paperwork? If you make a contribution of $250 or more to an organization, you can only claim a deduction if you have a written acknowledgement from the organization. This acknowledgement must include the amount of cash you contributed, whether you received any goods there or go. services in return for That's your contribution, some that I along knew, with the description like... and good faith estimate of the value of the goods or services provided. Or, if applicable, a statement that the only benefit you received was an intangible religious benefit. I write a $25 check to my church every Sunday. Do I have to get a written acknowledgement from them as well? <laughs> no. The written acknowledgement is only required for single contributions of $250 or more. You do not combine separate contributions. Interesting. Similarly, if contributions are made by payroll deduction, the deduction from each paycheck is treated as a separate contribution. Don't forget... As I previously stated, you cannot deduct a cash contribution of any amount unless you keep a bank record or have some written statement from the organization. All right. What about non-cash contributions? What type of records do I need to keep? The records you'll need to keep for non-cash contributions are more involved and depend on the amount of your deduction. There are different rules if your deduction is less than $250, at least $250, but not more than $500, over $500, but not more than $5,000, or over $5,000. Because we don't have time to get into all these situations, I suggest that you review Publication 526, Charitable Contributions, Got which it. has an in-depth discussion of records to keep for non-cash contributions. All right, Coach, we'll I'm pretty clear on what I can deduct how much I can deduct, and what records I need to keep. But what form do I use to claim my deduction? Now that I'm retired and my house is paid for, I'll be filing the short form, 1040A. Is there a line on that form for contributions, or do I attach a separate schedule? Unfortunately, to deduct a charitable contribution, you must file Form 1040 and itemize your deductions on Schedule A. Both cash and non-cash contributions are entered on Schedule A. If your total deduction for, for all non-cash contributions for the year the is over $500, okay. you must also complete Form 8283, Non-Cash Charitable Contributions, and attach it to your Form 1040. Yeah, that's individuals. Coach, we are almost out of time, but could you tell us if there are any <laughs> limits on the amount of your charitable You guys tell us how deduction? long these are. You're not there out of time. There can be limits on the amount of your charitable contribution <laughs> deductions. But only if your total contributions for the year are more than 20% of your adjusted gross income. For most of us, these limits will never apply. For example, if your adjusted gross income is $100,000, your contribution deduction would have to be over $20,000 before the limits might apply. The limit on your deduction, 50%, 30%, or 20%, will depend on the type of property you give and the type of organization you give it to. A different limit applies to certain qualified conservation contributions. Like land, We do probably. not have time to go into the computation of these limits. <laughs> if your contribution deduction is more than 20% of your adjusted gross income, Publication 526, Charitable Contributions, has a good explanation uh, of the limits and the worksheet you can use to figure the deduction limits. Before we end this program... I'd like to remind everyone about the various publications the IRS has that cover charitable contributions. Publication 526, Charitable Contributions, discusses everything we talked about today and much more. Publication 561, Determining the Value of Donated Property. All right, all right, all right. How to determine the value of donated property and discusses when you need an appraisal. Publication 1771, Charitable Contribution Substantiation and Disclosure Requirements covers substantiation and disclosure rules. Publication 4303, A Donor's Guide to Vehicle Donations, discusses the rules for donated vehicles. You can download these publications from irs.gov, or you can order them by calling 1-800-829-3676 or 1-800-829-4059 
for TTY TDD uh, help. Okay, cool. Easy. Great ending. Great ending. Um. All right. So, this is the last section. It's just called like, don't put your social security number on the forms. So here, here, <laughs> here's the video. We're just gonna watch the video real fast. Let me know if you can't hear. Oh, it's good. I can't full screen it. That's lame. <laughs> uh, Wait, what, what happens if you like control and Hello, mouse wheel in? To zoom the whole page. Oh, there we go. Okay. And we work for the exempt organization's office of the IRS. Oh, they're so to excited to be there. <laughs> and tax exempt organizations can help prevent identity theft. Like identity theft is a major concern. Oh, I hope I didn't just break it. Financial or personal <clears throat> identifying information right, shut up. is involved. A recent study suggests is that Vernon? That some <laughs> shut up. Tax exempt <laughs> it sounds like it <laughs> should be careful about accidentally providing social security numbers that can become public. This happens when tax exempt organizations include social security numbers on any of the annual form 990 sent to the IRS. That includes Form 990, 990EZ, and 990PF. What about 990N? Filing a form with the IRS increases the risk of identity theft. I don't get smart now. But remember, <laughs> when an organization applies for Throw that in too. status, no social security numbers. <laughs> series return, the law requires that both the IRS and the exempt organization make those forms available to the public. Do you think they the unclasp their, their hands at all? The IRS to huh. social security no. Numbers from those forms <laughs> they don't move their shoulders and they don't move their hands. It's not allowed. So anyone who looks at Form 990 will see those social security numbers increasing the risk of identity It's like theft. the 30th take because of that. The Chronicle of <laughs> Vernon kept itching his nose and ruining it. Has included social security oh, he almost did. Oh, almost. Most of those numbers belong to donors, trustees, employees, directors, and scholarship winners. Another large group is paid tax preparers who use Fucking their social security number instead sliver. of their preparer tax identification number, also known as the PTIN. PTIN. Be especially careful with attachments, too, such as a list of scholarship winners. That attachment also will be made public. Here's how to prevent this accidental okay, disclosure. Cool. Don't put social security <laughs> numbers on any version of a Form 990. <laughs> There's no there we go for your organization to include them. The IRS doesn't ask for them and we don't want them. Here are the forms <laughs> that should not include social Simple security enough. numbers. Forms 990, 990 easy, 990 oh, there we go. and 990PF. Yeah. The annual returns for charities. They thought of everything. Yeah, cuz those are made public. This that's the whole thing about this. filed by charities. Form 5227, filed by split Don't interest trusts. Forms 1023 and 1024, the applications to the IRS for tax-exempt status. Forms 8871 and 8872, filed by political organizations. The forms and their instructions are available at www.irs.gov. All right, I'm gonna take a picture of that real fast. Smart. In the forms and publications section. Oh, that was a nice outro. All right. That wasn't that bad. I thought I thought it was gonna be like a half hour long video. Man, we're done in twenty four minutes. Easy. All Not right. bad at all. All right. So we have now completed the entire small to mid-sized tax-exempt organization workshop. Woo woo. <laughs> Only took four more weeks than we thought. <laughs> <laughs> We're on track. Like, Hey, we got it done. That's the important part. And we had the certificates. We do. We do. I mean, not from the last two. They're just videos. They didn't give us nothing for it. But, um, Yeah. Yay! We did it! Congrats! Kevy's gonna be sad. He missed out. Kevy will be a little bit sad. I mean, it, 
totally. He's just all like often sad you know, on vacation, some <laughs> tropical location, some weird thing. Like, he's gonna be so sad that he missed out on this IRS workshop. So sad. Anyways, he's probably breaking a tear right now. Moment of silence for Kevin. I'm just kidding. Uh, that was not that much of a moment, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I'm gonna close it off. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Cheers. It's been have a good one. Been real, real fun. Now to make the articles of association. Get all the fun stuff now.